This is a camera lucida, and for the whole of the 19th century, it was the indispensable drawing aid for great masters and technical illustrators alike. And yet, it's virtually unknown today. The camera lucida allows you to trace what you see. Technically, it superimposes a virtual image of your subject onto your paper, so you can see both your hand and your subject at the same time. This works for landscapes, figure drawing, even copying other images. It radically transforms how you see and how you draw. So you may ask, where can I get one? Well, a portable camera lucida hasn't been manufactured in generations. An original camera lucida on eBay will run you three to five hundred dollars. At that price, it's a collectible or an antique, not an everyday tool. We decided to bring it back with authentic optics, lightweight portable construction, and at a price that even broke art students could afford. Hi, I'm Golan Levin. I teach new media art at Carnegie Mellon University. And I'm Pablo Garcia. I teach contemporary practices at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. And we're here to destroy arts education. No, we're not. No, we're not. We're here to make it better. Maybe destroy some myths and demonstrate some little known secrets. We both have a lot of students who think that drawing realistically is the most important thing. These students frequently also worship the old masters as if they had almost freakishly superhuman drawing abilities. Which is fine because we like the old masters too. They're great. They really are great. And drawing is great. I did nothing but draw for years. It's important and we both love drawing. But not always the way it's taught, which often overlooks the tightly interconnected historic relationship between drawing, visual culture, and imaging technologies. Which brings us to media archaeology. About 12 years ago, the artist David Hockney proposed the ideas in this book. Secret Knowledge, Rediscovering the Lost Techniques of the Old Masters. In it, Hockney presents compelling evidence that the old masters used various optical devices like the camera obscura, concave mirrors, and the camera lucida to help create their masterpieces. By the way, some people really hate this book. They want to believe that the old masters somehow had superhuman drawing abilities, and they think that Hockney is suggesting that the old masters were somehow cheating by using optical drawing aids. But really, it's the opposite. We think it shows that the old masters were even more amazing because they made it their business to engage with the most cutting-edge technologies of their day, optics. After first reading about Hockney's argument about 10 years ago, I bought an antique camera lucida and started drawing. One day, I asked Pablo if he'd ever happened to have read Hockney's book. Pablo brought in his camera lucida for me to try, and it blew my mind. I used to draw a lot, but my drawing skills had become pretty rusty. With the camera lucida, I was suddenly able to draw a live subject with the precision of a camera. Perspective, foreshortening, it was so easy I was giddy. When I tried to purchase one for myself, it eventually cost me $350 on eBay. I suddenly understood why hardly any of my art students had ever even heard of one of these things. Pablo and I realized that we had to make this device cheaply available for everyone. And why shouldn't it be cheap? A camera lucid is basically just a prism on a stick. Well, it's a bit more than that. The prism has to be specially mirrored. And the stick should be adjustable, like gooseneck. That didn't exist a hundred years ago. So we set about designing a camera lucida for today. The Neo Lucida. We wanted to get three things right. First, optics. We use the exact same prism design as they did a hundred years ago, which allows you to draw right side up. Second, portability. This is not bulky studio equipment. It's small, foldable, and you can keep it in your bag. It weighs just nine ounces, or about a quarter of a kilo, and it's multi-purpose, too. The neck ends in a standard quarter 20 thread, so it can also double as an adjustable mount for your pocket camera. And third, price. If you were an artist in 1880, an entry-level camera lucida would cost you at least 120 of today's dollars. This was fussy equipment, too, with lots of hand-tooled parts. The Neo Lucida is designed with modern off-the-shelf components and just a few custom manufactured pieces to replicate the precision of the classic design, but at a fraction of the price. In fact, the Neo Lucida is the least expensive camera lucida of all time. So, why are we doing this? We're doing this as a provocation, not as a business. We genuinely believe that using a camera lucida will profoundly change how people see, how they draw, and how they think about art. We want to see what would happen if art students in art schools suddenly had lots of these. And we want to prompt questions about the relationship of art and technology. And to disrupt business as usual in the classroom. But to produce the Neolocita, and to keep costs as low as possible, we have to leverage today's mass production marketplaces. Our suppliers require minimum orders of 500 pieces for things like prisms and thumb nuts. And that's where you come in. 
By supporting our project, you'll help us in our dream to transform the studio arts classroom, revive an amazing tool, and educate people around the world about the history of art and technology. This is your only chance to get a Neo Lucida. Once we make this batch, we're done. After that, we'll open source our designs, CAD files, and manufacturing information. One last thing. We're really interested in how the Neo Lucida is used, and we want to involve you in our project. Each Neo Lucida comes with an addressed prepaid postcard. Do a drawing, send it in the mail, and it'll go into an online archive and may end up in a book of your Neo Lucida drawings. Thanks. Thanks.